This uh, week is uh, Catholic Cemeteries Week, um, and it's a good time to remember that one of the spiritual works of mercy is to pray for the dead. Uh, So that's something we should always do at every Mass. We should do that, but every day we can do that. Uh, But especially, I think, this weekend with Memorial Day, uh, to pray for those who gave their lives for our country. Um, Also, a corporal work of mercy is to bury the dead. And with, uh, with, along with that is to care for our cemeteries. So this is a natural way for me to remind you uh, that we um, have envelopes in the back of the church to help uh, with our cemeteries. Um, here in Blanchardville, that we are uh, raising money to help uh, pay for the uh, curb and gutter. Uh, in Argyle, we are uh, raising money to help pay for um, surveying the cemetery uh, and some other, other works that needs to be done there in Argyle. So uh, there are separate envelopes for each, one for Blanchardville, one for Argyle. Uh, so we do appreciate your help uh, paying for those uh, works and that corporal work of mercy. Well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, today we celebrate Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. As we heard in our first reading, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples And of course, today is also known as the birthday of the church, so happy birthday. Now, one of the things that we often focus on on Pentecost is to celebrate that Christ came for all, regardless of race, color, gender, etc. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, and we should treat each other that way. We also celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Now, sometimes the Holy Spirit is forgotten because we can visualize a father. We can visualize a son. But what is the Holy Spirit? When we do think about the Holy Spirit, we often think of a dove. And so maybe if we think about a dove, we think of peace, love, tranquility. Sometimes that can go too far, and that's similar to the hippie Jesus that has done so much harm in our church, that Jesus is all about love, man. (laughs) But we forget that he talked about sin and hell more than anything else. But to get back to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is really about power. He comes in power. We hear this throughout the scriptures. At the very beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And later in the Acts, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And again, in the second letter to St. Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. And these are just a couple of examples. The Holy Spirit was sent to give us the power we need to be effective witnesses in the world today. From my own experience, when I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about how when I rely on the Holy Spirit rather than myself, I am much more effective. If anyone ever compliments me on a homily or a teaching, I always, maybe I don't say it out loud, but I certainly think to myself, that's not me, that's the Holy Spirit. Or sometimes I found myself saying things maybe in the confessional or elsewhere, that's definitely not me. That's the Holy Spirit speaking through me. And this is especially true if I take a moment and say a silent prayer asking for guidance. We can all tap into that. And God wants us to. We are given the gifts of the Holy Spirit to do just that. You may remember that I talked about these in the bulletins last year. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, 
counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. And if I may be so bold, we need all of those today, but I think especially fortitude, which is the strength to stand up for the truth, especially when it is difficult. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are habits or instincts that are provided by God to help us in God's process of perfecting us. They are all found perfect in Christ. And so as we strive to become more like Christ, they are perfected in us. But we cannot be passive in this process. We must use them. By proper exercise of these gifts, we produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. So God gives us an abundance of gifts if we are open to them. And by working with the Holy Spirit, we work to perfect ourselves in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is God's love working through us if we allow him to. We saw this recently with the teacher in Argyle who stood up for the truth of God rather than bowing to the farce of gender ideology. Speaking the truth is always an act of love because God is love and God is truth. So love and truth must be intimately linked. And truth is one of the names of the Holy Spirit that we hear especially in the Gospel of John. When he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. When we open ourselves to the spirit, we are filled with the truth. When we close ourselves to God, when we make ourselves God, then we close ourselves to the truth. And we close ourselves from God's love. The spirit of truth is just one of the many names for the spirit. Comforter, counselor, advocate, paraclete, spirit of life, author of scripture. Another beautiful place to better understand the spirit is our sequence today. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a light of light divine. Come, Father of the poor. There's another one of those names. Come, source of all our store, another name. Come within our bosom shine. You, comforters, the best. You, the soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours and our inmost being fill. When you are not, we have not. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gift descend. Seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Give them virtue, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. That prayer gives us a much better understanding of the Holy Spirit and his place in our lives. Comfort, refreshment, solace, light, healer. And of course, one place where we experience the Holy Spirit the most is the sacraments. We could speak of all of the sacraments. 
but wash the stains of guilt away. Think of the prayer of absolution. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and poured out the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of sins. Remember that when we confess, we are not confessing to the man of the priest. We are confessing to the Holy Spirit working through him. And so I say, as I said so many times, why would we not take advantage of this most awesome gift? So, brothers and sisters, as we prepare to receive the Eucharist today, made really present here through the power of the Holy Spirit, we should all take a moment to reflect on the Holy Spirit in our lives. How he has touched us through the anointing of baptism and confirmation and through the power of the other sacraments. How he wants to pour out God's mercy on us. How he wants to fill us with these gifts. May we all be open to the spirit within our lives so that we, like the disciples on Pentecost before us, can proclaim the saving gospel to all the nations. For only when we exercise the gifts of the spirit can we be perfected as members of the body of Christ. Only when we live in the truth can we receive the peace that God extends to us. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.